Welcome everyone to GTC Day 8, the Google Teacher Certification. Today's assignment and scenario are extremely short. This is going to be shorter than yesterday. Uh, this is all about calendar. Uh, Google is quite proud of their calendar, uh, and they ought to be. It's nice. It's a, it's a nice uh, setup. It plays okay with uh, your Outlook calendars, and it doesn't play very nicely with your Apple calendar. So, you know, it's kind of like everything. Once you buy into the Googleverse, you've bought into everything. But for school uses, the calendar can't be beat. Let's, let's do a little dive into it first, and then we'll talk about it. So let's go to classroom.google. Uh, come and let's go get into your classroom. And first things first, let's make an announcement. We are learning calendar. Yay. Okay, and we're going to send that out to everybody. And one of the things right away, if you'll notice, everything in here you can set to uh, your calendar. That's what's nice about it. Everything, like yesterday when we were working on the assignment, you notice you could set it to your calendar date. So the problem with calendar isn't in the calendar. The problem that I hear from teachers uh, out there who are Google Classroom teachers is getting kids to look at the darn thing. That's the problem. So when you go into your classwork, you go to calendar, here it is. As you can see, it puts a little circle around the date. Um, you can change up the look of your calendar. In other words, you can look at it by day. Boy, there's not a lot going on today. You can look at it by week. You can look at it by month. And you can look at it by year. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and then you can look at it from a schedule point of view. In other words, everything that's in the calendar that has that you are a part of, either because the calendar has it already in there, like Single Day Mayo, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, Father's Day, or it has assignments. Okay. So your schedule is readily available to you. How do you add into the calendar? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can go in and you can just click on it on the date and there it is. Um, you can give it a title. Okay. You can make this an event. You can make it a reminder. Now that, you know, it's kind of like, wait a minute, what's the difference? Well, the reminder is exactly what you think it is. It's going to send you a reminder and you can tell it to every day or excuse me, every weekly on Wednesdays, Monday on the third. In other words, it's going to tell you when you want this sent to you. And then the event is you can add a location, you can add people. So in other words, this is how you can let people know to be a part of your uh, calendar event, GCE level one ADM. And you know, there's our old friend. Okay, so now he's a part of our calendar. And we're going to uh, add a time. And you, know, you can change all this up just by clicking. It's that simple. 11 and by default it is set to an hour okay but it's easy enough for you to go in and click on things and instead of that you want to make it an hour and a half just click you that this is the location where you can put in where you're going to meet and then of course you can add a description and you can tell <laughs> <laughs> which calendar you want this to appear on. This is how you can send an event or to other people's calendars. Simple as that. And then you save it. 
Yes, I want to send that email invitation out to principal, whatever his name is, Brandon. Okay, so now I've done that. And as you can see, it shows up in my calendar. Easy peasy. This is, this is not anything hard to understand. It's very straightforward. Um, so what's with all the calendars over here? Well, obviously, these represent all the people that I have either trained or have been in our classroom that have uh, created a calendar <laughs> and invited me to it. I can go ahead and click this and show all of my calendars, which is quite a few as well. So you, you, you find that what happens is you get a lot of calendar invitations and people asking you to join their calendars. And I can see why kids would get a little intimidated by this because if every teacher they have in their school has a calendar, of course, what they can do is they can create a calendar. Let's do that. So I'm going to create a calendar and I'm going to call it my work. And what I can do is by adding in the people who are my teachers, and this is going to be a little bit hard to do, but let's just go ahead. You, you know what we're doing here. So we're going to go in here and GCE level one, and then his name's going to pop up. And then I can do the same thing, GCE level one, and then she's going to pop up. These are the teachers I would be. And that way now I'm, I can see their calendars. It's as easy as that. And if I need to, I can, you know, delete them, whatever. That's how you build your own calendar. Not hard. So when you look at this, what you're thinking about is why would I want to have, you know, these, these multiple calendars and you have to really kind of think about creating them so that they um, don't overwhelm you because it's very easy to get overwhelmed. The other thing that Googly does is you can subscribe to a calendar. So again, you can add a calendar that people have made out there. So you can go in here and you can say, I want to be a part of this calendar and this calendar and this calendar and this calendar. Um, you can browse calendars of interest. And as you see, all these pop up. This is the question we're going to be doing today, by the way. So, you know, there's lots and lots of different things you can do with calendars. And it's one of those things where we could stay here all day, but it's really just, you know what you're doing. You click on it. You, here's your thing. You can go over here to create a date and time. You can do that. Uh, this isn't, this just isn't all that hard to create. Now, you know, Lordy, don't get yourself into my situation where you have this many calendars. Let's see what happens. If I clicked on, um, this one's pretty close. If I click on that calendar and I come over here to the dots, you see what I can do? I can hide it from the list. And if I hide it, then, you know, I don't see it. But if I hide my calendar, they, people don't, other people don't see it. So let's go ahead and say display this only. And now all I see is Miss Simpson's class calendar. It's another way to, to show what calendars you want to have a part of and what calendars you don't. Creating calendar, simple as clicking on the plus, create a new calendar, subscribe to a calendar. This isn't hard. All righty. Now, the other thing that people like to do is add uh, calendars of interest, which I just showed you, 
and you go in and you can say, well, I want to see what um, University of Louisville's football calendar might look like. And when you do that, it will give you a listing and good luck with finding it, but they're here. It gives you a listing of all the different calendars that might be available out there. Of course, these are a little bit off right now. And there it is, the Louisville Cardinal football schedule. And you've added that calendar now to your calendars. Easy, 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 easy. Well, let's go look, because we just did it. But let's go ahead and look at what it's asking us to do. So open the Google Calendar and create a new calendar called Google Appointments. Will do. So let's go to Classwork. Let's go to Google Calendar. Here we are. My calendars. Plus, create a new calendar. G-O-O-G-L-E-A-P-P-O-N-T-M-E-N-T-S. Done. And create the calendar. Okay. The second part of it is, whoops. The second part of it is open the Google Calendar and use the Browse Calendars of Interest feature to add an MLB team or other sports team of your choice to the calendar. Sure, we can do that. That's easy. We just did it. So I go in here and where it has that, I'll say browse calendars of interest. Here's my sports. Um, let's see, it said baseball, but it really doesn't care. Here's the National Football League. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick my team, which is the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm going to put the check in there. And now that calendar has been added to my list of calendars over here. You can see there's my Google appointments calendar. Um, and there's my other calendars. There's my Minnesota Vikings calendar. And when I click on these, anyone can see all the details. You can see any of the details. Let's do this while we're at it. Let's make our calendar available in our wonderful sites that we created yesterday. And I can do that with, I can share it, but I also would like to have people to see our calendar. So here's my public URL to this calendar, okay? And all I gotta do is highlight that, copy it. And let's go over and find our Google Sites. And let's go into my portfolio again. Pages, click on the plus down here. And I'm going to put in my calendar, create the new page. There it is. And now I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go embed. I'm going to leave that URL the way it is because for some reason, and I think it's because my browser is set to block um, bringing in iframes. That, that's the embed code. Uh, so I'm going to just leave it at URL because you see it shows up. And bang. So there's my calendar now in my, and as you can see, well, let's go to preview. it. When I preview it, you can see that it lets me see it by the month, by the week. So in other words, it looks just like the one that I have uh, in my Google Calendar. Remember, this is public. Unless, of course, from what we learned the other day, when we create a site, we can make it so that it is only viewable to certain people. So if you made your Google Sites available to your parents of your school, then they can see the Google Calendar for your class. All right, let's go back and look at some quick questions. 
Is it possible to save a Google Calendar as a PDF from the print settings window? Yes, it is. Which is an alternative way to add a calendar entry in the Google Calendar. Type the event into Quick Add, click on the down uh, arrow button next to the appropriate calendar in your calendar and click Create an Event, send an email, the calendar, nope. A and B. To move a calendar entry from one calendar to another, right click on the event and select your calendar of choice from the calendar drop down menu. That's as easy as it is. What is the easiest way to remove a calendar entry? You know this one. Right click on the entry and delete. When embedding a Google Calendar in a Google site, well, we just did that. Which of the following can be customized? All of the above. Miss Jones would like to use her primary calendar to keep track of personal school events. What can she do to help categorize her events? Color code the personal events one color and school events another color. One way to create a calendar event is to click on your Google Calendar window and fill in the dialog box. What do you need to do to add additional information? You can do that on the more link in the dialog box. You know, the, the little, I call them the snowmen, the dots. What is important to remember to when embedding a Google Calendar in a public Google site, if you want to share the information with anyone in the world, you need to make the calendar public. You can share a Google Calendar to the following, privately to your class, with any individual, publicly on the web, all the above. All the above. There is no limit to how many people you can invite to a calendar event. That's false. 200. Remember that. 200. 200 is the magic number in the Googleverse. In other words, you can only have 200 people in a Hangout. You can only have, uh, you can only share uh, document sites. Well, not sites, but document slides, sheets, all that stuff that you create, 200. All right, let's look at our Google Calendar flashcards for the day. I will fix that so it comes up clean. Can a calendar be viewed by a select few? Calendar can be shared with a select group of people. Of course we know that. Oh, well, look, we're already up to number nine. How do you make a calendar public? When you first make a calendar, check the calendar public option. It's by default. Task to-do list of upcoming events, how to display a pending task, go to my calendar pane and click the task button and it shows up. How can you display multiple calendars? <laughs> display multiple calendars, you must select them in my calendars and other panes. In other words, when we looked at the calendars and we were looking at all of those calendars that we had there, the reason why they're all showing up is because I haven't gone in and deselected them except for this one right now. So if I came back in here and I selected my Google Foo, that's under now that'll show up. So that, you know, it's really my fault. I'm not going in here and wiping out all these calendars. I have them all checked. Not now. To display, uh, let's see. Well, good, we did it. Let's go back to the beginning. Google Calendar, a time management application on free. Thank you. Does Google have any built-in calendars? Yes, of course. Can you create different calendars? You know that now. Uh, all kinds. How can you view your calendar? Day, month, yep. And year, by the way. Which is a nice uh, feature if you think about if you're planning something uh, with your with your uh, teachers in your group, you can go in here and click on year and there it is. You could literally go through this thing and map out your school year, when you're going on field trips, when a report cards do, all that kind of stuff. You could go ahead and get it done right at the beginning of school. Makes for a very nice system. Highly, highly recommended. Okay, six, quick add. Intelligence will let you quickly add an event. Yay. Who can view a public calendar? Anybody. <laughs> can a calendar be, be viewed by a select few? You know that. You just go in and share it and say, here's the people that can see my calendar, and you invite them. How can you make a calendar public? We already went over this one. Okay, so we're up. We're, we're caught back up. All right. So we have finished scenario eight. 
we now know how to make a calendar. Very simple. Uh, and we now know how to add events, add reminders, add tasks, do all those things. This is, there's a lot um, of this on the test. So if you're not comfortable working in calendar, take the time to just play and get comfortable with it because on the test, it will do a lot of calendary kind of things. Tomorrow, scenario nine, this is a long one. So we're gonna be spending some quality time in here because there's an awful lot that we have to do. Um, we're gonna be creating stuff. We're gonna be putting an answer key in. So this one, this one is a little bit lengthy. So we'll make sure that we go over it so you can stay with me. And as always, as always, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, please do not hesitate to drop me a text at that 502-457-2937 number that I freely give out to you. And also, as always, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll get through this together and we'll see each other probably sometime in May or June, maybe. Alrighty, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.